Hey guys, you're looking at the uh, Care Leverock Castle. This is a 3D model that you can find at uh, Sketchfab, I believe. I'll link to it in the video description. And this is a, it's a, it's a Scottish uh, castle that was actually, uh, I think used some Portuguese design here. I think this is the only one that's actually in, a, in this type of shape. And I thought this was super interesting and I thought it'd be really interesting if that lived in Foundry. And, and so what I did was um, I recreated that uh, using Dungeon Draft. And I created multiple levels. And then I put all those levels into Foundry. And then I actually uh, used Ripper's uh, 3D Canvas to actually even turn that in, back into a three-dimensional uh, model that you can use as a battle map. And so I'm going to show you guys in a series, this is part one, we're going to actually build this castle from the ground up, starting from a blank canvas in Dungeon Draft. And then we're going to bring it all the way into Foundry. And I'm going to show you how I constructed it level by level. We're going to talk about how you do those textures that you see there in the walls. And, uh, and basically, I'm just going to show you how to take any map or 3D rendering and, and recreate it. So, so let's get started. Just wanna say also, you can actually get this map now from my Patreon. You can just go there, um, sign up for the, uh, the $7 a month uh, thing and you can get all of my content and you can actually pick up this map and open it yourself in Dungeon Draft, assuming that you're a uh, Forgotten Adventures Patreon and you can um, basically see how I built the whole thing uh, looking at the map itself and you can of course make all of your adjustments to it. Uh, we'll start with a blank canvas here, and we're gonna we're gonna use the um, trace image tool. And what I went uh, online, I went and found a uh, schematic for Care Laverock, and I um, I'm using it in the, as a trace image. And I'm I'm sizing it. I'm not gonna try to get this thing exact. It's not gonna be a complete replica. I want this thing to be playable as a a battle map. Uh, and so what I'm doing here is I'm I'm just sizing it for the scale that I want for a battle map. And, and what I'm looking for is I'm looking at how those, those towers um, in the bottom left corner, like how much room and squares would they give me? And so I'm just kind of like positioning things around and I'm just making sure that from a general layout perspective, this is kind of what I want. So kind of like what I got right here. And so I'm just going to uh, trace this shape. And again, I'm not going to try to get it exact because there's just some things that I, I want to be able to have room for within the battle map. But I will uh, start by just placing some walls here around kind of the major areas just to give myself an idea of how this thing's going to shape. Now I'm going to use my spline tool. So I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to make a perfectly round circle. And I'm going to do it in kind of quadrants here not going to finish it because I, I want to be able to enter into that, uh, you know, that front tower from below. And, and now I need to try to make again, a perfect circle. You can see how I'm starting not at that other wall, but I'm starting more of where the spline would make a perfect curve. That way my, uh, my architecture is more perfect circles. And I, I won't complete, you see how I'm like not completing the wall here because I don't want Dungeon Draft to complete it and make it a single wall. I want to be able to delete points later so that I can really kind of get the circle shape that I want without making the entire thing a circle. Um, I don't like wrestling with, you know, with Dungeon Draft and like having to put uh, doors in certain places. I want to just be able to open up walls where I want to open them. So here I am deleting points just one by one until I have those walls to where I really want them. And in this case, I'll just connect them with a separate wall. And I'll do the same thing here, just deleting them back to where they join properly. Uh, of course, I can't just delete that last line. I've got to, got to make this wall so that it fits. So I'm going to make another point here and then I'll delete that 
a line hanging over. And just like I did before, I didn't make this one single round piece, so now I can delete these points back to where they join the wall again. And then I'll just make some adjustments to, to have them hook up properly. All we're doing in this part is we're establishing the foundation design. And this is really critical when you're designing a map, is figuring out what color palette you're using, what materials you're gonna use. In this case, I'm using this, uh, I think it's sandstone. Um, just because I like the color, I like the color for what the original model and what the castle looks like. And we're going to play around a lot with Forgotten Adventures' new rubble uh, packs. It's been a long time coming since we got rubble. We've been asking for it forever, and they finally delivered a really, really good set of rubble. And so I just thought building a ruin, this is my first ruin, um, and using some of that rubble would be a great place to set it off. Now, what we're doing here is we're just laying out the basic floor. And we may change, and I will actually change the materials I'm working with, but what I want to get is at least the, the shapes of the floor and maybe some starting material as far as the suggestion goes. And then I'll you know, manipulate that and change that um, as I continue to develop this. I'm gonna use slightly different materials just so I can see the transition places. Uh, if you wanna follow along, you can bring up the link to the, the 3D uh, model that I'm using for this. I actually have it up on another screen, so I'm kind of referring back to that. I'm kind of pivoting around and zooming in and I'm looking at how things are laid out in that model and how I might wanna adjust them for this, this battle map. But for the most part, we're just making sure that our floors are in place and are giving us a sense of our space. You notice I don't use Dungeon Draft's build tool. It's just too cumbersome and it has too many things you end up wrestling with. So I never really use that tool uh, when I'm designing. I'd rather just place patterns for floors and walls as their own walls. I also don't use any of the wall built-in shadows. As you guys will see, I use shadow paths to really shade things. Now, I wanna give this some three-dimensionality, so I'm playing with the new uh, paths here. These are relatively new. I'm using the spline tool to make sure that I get them in a, in a pretty good circle, and you know I'll terminate them where I think it's logical to terminate them. But the goal here is just to make the base of the, the castle look a little bit more substantial. So it doesn't look like a you know spindly little wall there. It looks like it's actually got you know a real mortared foundation. And also I'm not going to try to put the moat into this. You're going to see something I do later. All of my my textures for my um, terrain I'm actually going to make I'm going to put on their own levels because I don't want just a moat. I want also another version of my background uh, because maybe I want this castle to be on an elevated sort of plateau versus a moat. And I want the flexibility to do that. So I'm gonna design it all in here and then I'll export it separately. And what I'm doing here is I'm just looking at my walls and I'm trying to figure out how to make them just a little bit more substantial because these external walls are the external walls of the castle. They tend to be thicker. And so I'm, I'm looking at some of the new assets and some of the old assets, and I'm, I'm filtering for the, the stone type that I'm looking for. I'm just kind of getting a feel for what's available to me in terms of assets. And I'll end up coming back to some of these things later and using them in different capacities. But I'm liking what this wall piece does to expand, just, just kind of make thicker these walls. But I've, I've decided that the best way to do this is gonna to be to deploy it as a path. So I'm gonna use my spline tool again. I'm just, I don't have snap to grid on, I'm just eyeballing this. And I'm just making this look like this wall just has a little bit more masonry associated with it. So that it really does kind of stand on its own as, a, as the external wall to this castle.
just holding down shift, trying to get it approximately to follow the, that circle there, but not, not trying to be exact with it. That's looking pretty good. Now I'm, I'm looking at my space and I'm looking back at my 3D model. Again, if you want to follow along, bring that up in another tab. And I'm, I'm going to use this time to establish maybe some design parameters. And in this case, with what's new is all of these new rubble pieces. I can go, I can actually build a wall brick by brick. And if you look at the, the 3D model, there's actually a, you know, a broken wall here. There's a, a wall that's, you know, used to probably support this southern area, which is, you know, uh, was, was rooms at some point. Uh, and that wall's now broken into pieces. There's, um, you know, you can see through some of it and it's, it's just not a complete wall. So I want to try to build that here. I want to try to create this idea of a, a broken ruined wall. And I'm going to, I'm just building it brick, brick by brick. And I'm playing around, I'm getting used to the assets here and what their sizes are and how they work together. And I'm noticing that there's certain bricks that, that are the same size already. So those tend to lend themselves well. And I'm just kind of like laying them down randomly. And if you're noticing here, I'm also going over to the left and I'm changing the levels that I'm placing these at because I'm gonna to want to, to put shadows in between some of these to really show this kind of difference in depth and show that maybe one brick is sitting on top of another one. And so I'm, I'm just kind of trying to randomly place these, putting them at different levels. And you'll see as I start to do my shading in between, it'll start to expose some of that leveling that I'm doing and it'll give us a nice effect. So here I'm gonna fade a path, it's a double path. And I'm just gonna kind of start drawing through and you can see with the level that I'm drawing at, I'm starting to expose and separate the lower bricks from the upper bricks. And I can't even see where that separation is, so I'm just experimenting using the path itself to see where the separation kind of naturally exists. And I'm going to spend some time in this section putting in some real detail uh, because it just it helps me establish the motif for the rest of the design. And so, you know, we'll we'll really today just focus on this one section, kind of um, really kind of build it out. And, you know, what this is teaching me is like, how do I build brick by brick in other parts of the castle? How do I maybe distress some of these walls that, you know, right now are a little bit too perfect. Um, how am I gonna use these brick assets to, to create this sort of distressed look, this kind of ruined look? And, and now I'm using some of these to actually create some variance in this wall. I want it to not be a perfect wall. Again, like, you know, some of these bricks have fallen or uh, fallen out of place over time. Some of the bricks have been damaged they're not perfectly uh, formed anymore. And so this is all an opportunity to, uh, to kind of establish how, how I think that, you know, this, this might look. And now I, I think I want to put a staircase here. I want an elevation change. And when you're making your maps, it's, it's uh, it's good to like vary the elevation. It just makes the map more interesting. You know, I want this room to the south to be a little bit lower than the one to the north. This is a bit change that I'm making from the original. Uh, and now I'm just you know deciding you know do I want you know some kind of archway here? Eventually you'll see how I uh, expose the gaps. Um, I'm going to use some lighting and some shading just to uh, show that there's gaps in this wall. Ultimately, when I get into this into three dimensions, I'll do, I'll do some of that work as well. And here I'm just using actually some gravestone pieces to uh, just vary the masonry, make it seem like there are some bricks maybe that were 
uh, coming out of the wall. Uh, maybe they came out over time. And you can see as we're doing going brick by brick and we're adding uh, more thickness in certain areas, it really starts to make it feel like it's it was a, a real, you know, designed wall that, that over time just, uh, you know, just kind of started to fall apart. And now here I'm going to actually focus on that that staircase and see if I can establish just a starting point for how the elevation might change. This would be a really, really short staircase, couple steps. And I'm just looking at my different assets. I'm filtering for the stone that I've been using. I'm just seeing what's available. And again, I come back to the grave components. I'm going to, I'm going to take that um, pattern. I'm going to move it down to negative 400 because you know, I'm not going to have water on this map. I mean, it's, it's going to be a whole separate thing. So I'm going to use all of my, um, you know, my layers to be able to play around here. And again, I'm back to these grave components because they're just, they're nice finished pieces of masonry that look like they were destroyed over time. And so I think they'll make good steps. And what I want to do is just make sure that because I'm, I'm kind of sandwiching things into in just a couple of layers, I'm, I'm making sure that I'm getting my shading in before I kind of build this out too far. Here it looks like I can create a step that maybe was separated over time. It's got a huge crack in it. One of the pieces has fallen a little bit lower than the other one. And I'm getting this nice, just kind of distressed look. Stacking these pieces together. And it gives me a pretty believable, you know, small staircase. So I'll have to figure out how I want to transition from that upper level to the lower level. And I'll be I'll be playing around with these patterns. Um, but I'll give myself a starting point just to kind of remind myself of, you know, there's a transition there and, and there may be some more work to do. And here I'm just trying different patterns, seeing if they fit with color scheme and things like that, seeing if I like it. I really like these paths. Um, they can take what normally just looks like a, a plain edge to to really a distressed edge. There's going to be some better patterns that match this this path later, but you'll find a lot of these. You'll find I'll, I'll use these um, those stone paths quite a bit. Now I'm really just having fun looking through what Forgotten Adventures has given us in terms of rubble. Here's a, a piece that's just automatically in a circle. I mean, talk about a lot of effort to try to lay all these in a circle. They've already done it for us. And so I think that, you know, these two towers would be pretty obvious places that, you know, bricks have come loose and kind of toppled over. That tower to the right actually is not going to go up at all. The tower has been completely destroyed. I'm going to leave it at one level. The tower to the left, however, is going to go up about five or six floor. So it's going to be the tallest, one of the tallest assets in this map. And I'll have windows built into it and staircases and it'll all come together really well in Foundry as a three-dimensional battle map. And now I'm just taking some of this rubble, again offered recently, and I'm just kind of laying it out here. This is more rubble than you would see in the, um, the original uh, 3D um, ruin, but I want this to be a little bit more distressed. I want this to feel a little bit more like, you know, it hasn't been kept up by a, uh, you know, historical society and that sort of thing. You know, I may want to have some bandits camped out here. I may want to use this as a, as a stabby point. I may have a, a dragon use this as, you know, kind of a youngling dragon use this as a base. So I'm just, you know, again, playing around with these assets and, and being okay with making changes later. Now, I do want to play with the separation. And I really want to imply that this is a broken wall. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out the lowest level I need to get to to start laying shadows. And here I'm laying shadows 
um, and you can see I'm intentionally separating. I'm using fade on both sides uh, because I want this light to kind of come through. And I actually want to make it more dramatic. So I'm doing a second shadow longer following the same sort of pattern I did before. And it's giving me this nice look like the light is coming in from the north. It's flowing through this sort of porous damaged wall into, into the southern end. And with the north side, I'm not going to have the same kind of light effect. So I'm just going to use, you know, just regular light occlusion there, you know, shorter shadow path, just to show the three dimensionality, help that, that damaged wall sort of stand up off of the, uh, of the floor. And as I'm looking at the, um, the model, I noticed that there's a basically an old fireplace here. So I'm gonna just create the footprint for that fireplace, just to make sure I've got it accounted for in sort of the early design. I think tactically speaking, you can, you know, players can stand on top of this fireplace. I think it's gonna it works well for, for a battle map, so I wanna include it. And now as I'm looking back at the model, there's this fireplace that stands up off of, you know, most of this, the southern wall is completely destroyed. It's almost at ground level, but there's this portion of it that used to be a fireplace that stands up off of it. And, you know, when I ultimately bring this into Foundry, I want this to be a, a nice sort of three-dimensional piece that shows some variation in this wall. Uh, can be used to you know, hide behind or you know have a campfire going, and so I'm I'm going to use the same techniques that I just sort of discovered above, but this time I'm doing everything above the wall line. Cause look, I, I placed that wall already, so I've got fewer levels to play with, and that's why you're seeing me bring out the shadows as I go, because I literally have to layer them on one layer, versus having when I did my wall in the middle, I had you know all you know seven nine layers to play with kind of having to be a little bit more creative with how I do them. I'm gonna use that same technique I did before to create a chunkier wall, just using these headstones. They, they look like finished masonry. It looks, works really well, I think. And this is giving me a nice feeling like this portion of the wall is really standing up and uh, is standing up higher than that, uh, than that lower portion. I'm gonna use some of these unfinished brick sections or brick um, assets because so I think they all come together and look pretty good and then I'm going to attempt to you know make you know an old now destroyed um, you know fireplace there's the smoke asset I, actually not sure I think this might come from AOA's uh, fire and electricity pack but I'm going to use that just to show kind of some soot, like maybe over the years, you know, someone's tried to use this uh, this thing here. And then I'm going to use some of these clouds. I think these are also clouds from AOA. I'm setting them to black at very low opacity. And just to really show, you know, I realize that's probably maybe too much. I think I overdid it, so I just backed off a little bit. But again, just to show some distress here. Then I'll add again some more of these kind of random bricks. Just to add another level of just distress and believability to the fact that this thing is has been ruined and abandoned for a while. And I just want to make sure that all of my walls have this that same three-dimensionality, that light occlusion that happens wherever the wall meets the floor. It's going to gather shadows. So if you haven't seen my shadow tutorial, I walk you through how to use shadows. Shadows is the number one thing that you can use smartly to increase the quality of the maps that you do. The second thing is floors. That's why you're going to see me spend a lot of time on this floor here, because between floor and shadows, um, it's really kind of how you set your maps apart from 
just kind of being interesting to, you know, being more artistic. I'm remembering these slabs. It's another introduction with the Forgotten Adventures um, assets. And I'm just kind of seeing how these things look. I just like that they're they're really finished looking. I'm noticing that they they match really well to that floor type. And so I'm just gonna grab a couple, drag them out so I have them for reference. And then I'm gonna do something here, which is a floor technique where you really vary, vary up your floor. You can see I'm tracing around, I've got snap to grid on. Tracing around in kind of random ways. So what I want this to be, and again, this is a departure from the, the model, is I want this floor to look like at one point it had stone tiles, and then over the years those stone tiles were either crushed or removed or, or crumbled. I'm realizing that I, I drew my my pattern's a little too high, so I was covering up some of the objects. Again, just kind of keeping it random. With the idea that you know more of the traffic over time would be in the middle of the room, so that would be where you would find the distressed and missing tiles um, more likely than, than elsewhere. And I'm grabbing some of those tiles I laid earlier and I'm I'm just kind of pivoting them a little bit. Like maybe there's some tiles that that were removed, but they're still on the floor. It's kind of adjusting how much of those tiles are, are looking there. And that looks pretty pretty random now. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll throw another couple of these tiles in, slightly um, angle them, right? I'll hold down control or shift and I'll angle them a little bit differently. And then I'll even go as far as actually putting shadows underneath them because I do want them to look like they're sitting up on top of the floor. And so this is just an easy way to help create that separation. And now what I want to do is I've taken my shadow path at 40% and I've dropped it way down to, I think it's 0.2. And I want to actually make these tiles stand up off of that floor underneath them. At first I'm, I'm starting to kind of surround them all with the shadow. And then I'm realizing that the way the light would work is it wouldn't land on all of the edges. It would land on, you know, come from one direction, let's say the top left, and it would cast a shadow down to the to the bottom right. So anywhere I have an edge that's on the bottom or the right, I'll, I'll go ahead and draw some shadows there. And you can see already that my, my tiles are now standing up off the floor, and they're really looking like there's some three-dimensionality to them. It's a pretty, pretty satisfying effect. I've created some real texture here. I don't have any large monotonous spaces of the same, you know, uh, the same patterns kind of repeating. So this is just really helpful for, again, making more interesting floors. Now here I'm saying, look, you know, I, maybe I want to vary this up even more. And there's a overlay pattern that makes all of these tiles look really uneven. I realize I don't want it everywhere. And so I'm going to switch to the overlay pattern and then I'm just gonna be judicious about where I use it. Of course, I have to get on the right level. And you can see it just distresses just those tiles at the edge. And what I'm doing here from just from a, an artistic perspective is I'm, I'm not stopping at just laying down a floor. I'm continuing to add layers and detail and nuance because you, as you add those layers, 
you you just create more variation and variation creates believability in you know in the in the brain of the, the person looking at it and it's really giving me a nice distressed look i'm getting rid of any repeating patterns and we're getting near the end of what we're going to accomplish for today and I want to show you this. I'm even going so far as finding a, a pattern that matches that kind of the grout or the earth sort of color underneath these. And I'm all I'm doing here is I'm trying to get rid of some of this monotonous pattern. Right? There's a lot of little stones. Maybe some of those stones are even, you know, taken out. And so I'm just creating variability. I'm looking at these large open spaces and I'm trying to change it. So that's it. That's as much as I want to show you guys today. We'll come back tomorrow or in, the, in part two and we'll keep building. So hopefully this was fun and, uh, and you guys have fun making your maps.